Welcome to Significant TV, Significant Stories, Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio today is Drew Poland, President of Op Decision. Drew, welcome to Significant TV. How are you today? Doing well. Thank you very much for having me. Great. You know, Drew, we were talking before we got started about the significance of entrepreneurs starting businesses under 40. And as I looked you up, your bio shows that you're a serial entrepreneur that has had many successes. And what I'm hoping today is that you'll share some of those successes and some of the challenges that allow you um, to be on a number of lists, including Philly 100, which always features the fastest growing companies in the Philadelphia area. Thank you. No, I look forward to sharing some stories and some background. Good, good. It's always helpful when talking with an entrepreneur to sort of go way back. What was that significant moment, or moments in your case, mm -hmm. that kind of helped shape you as an entrepreneur or give you that entrepreneurial thinking? Sure. So um, there's two significant moments that really come to mind. Um, mm -hmm. First one is when I was 14 years old. Uh, I was in a French class freshman year, and they were having a trip to Paris the following summer, and something that I, I really wanted to participate in. So I went home to my parents. I brought it up to them. And, um, Honestly, I grew up in a, in a middle class lifestyle where my parents really could provide majority of what I wanted or asked for, um, but a really big quality they wanted to instill in me was work ethic. So mm -hmm. the deal that they had made is that they would pay for half, which was 2500 and they would drive me around to find a job and put in applications to pay for the other half. And the further motivation is my dad actually cut out a picture of the Eiffel Tower taped it to the bathroom mirror, so I saw it every single morning when I went in to brush my teeth and get ready for school or get ready for work. Um, and that was the first thing that instilled a work ethic in me, um, a goal on why I was working, uh, and ultimately was able to go on that trip. So that was the, the first example. Mm -hmm. Second one was a little bit later in life. Um, it was my only experience in corporate America. Uh, I was working at one of the big cell phone vendors. Uh, I was 21, 22 and I had the good fortune where I had a really good sales background and was able to bring in six figures in commission um, within that first year. What was frustrating is heading into the second year, uh, I was given a new comp plan and that comp plan capped me at half of what I'd earned the year before, no matter what I sold, uh, and also took away my 10 biggest clients, calling them national accounts, um, provided no compensation, and the kicker was they told me I was too young to be promoted to go to that position uh, to be able to maintain those clients. Mm. Um, so that was the other motivation that really had me decide that a different career path or trajectory was going to make sense for me. Wow. I hear a sense of frustration, and yet I hear you taking action right away. Um, did you just quit, you know, the second month of the second year, or um, what was that <laughs> exit like? Because now you're in a position to influence other people's exits. Yeah, so the exit um, was probably a little too well thought out. Um, I don't necessarily condone this, but at 21, 22, I'm going to give myself an excuse. Me and three of the top sales reps um, within that office had realized that setting out to, to create our own company was going to make sense. Um, financially, I was in a place where I had a failed business venture uh, when I first moved out to San Diego. I uh, had beat up my credit cards a little bit, and I really still needed to have some additional income coming in. Um, but ultimately, we had set up an office um, down the street from uh, where we were working. Uh, and <laughs> wow. the day that I went in to quit, uh, I literally drove down the street to our first day with our new office um, and was able to immediately transition um, into running that business with my partners. Um, so we had a well laid out plan. Um, everything luckily fell into place, and the one ability um, I've always had was the ability to you know, bring in business. Um, and I've had the good fortune of having services and products that are helpful uh, to the business community. So uh, having belief in what we're doing um, also really helped kind of connect the dots and be able to take that next step uh, without really looking back. Also helped that um, didn't really have a lot of real world responsibilities at that point. Right. So uh, rent, car payment, insurance, but outside of that, um, that made it a little bit easier to take that jump without looking back. It is all about jumps, and right now, you are kind of going back to the theme, you're an entrepreneur that's running a business under 40. Talk to me about how those life experiences as a 14-year-old, 
um, the you know getting a six-figure commission and then having it essentially taking away how does that impact what you do now in your role as president of Opdecision? Great question. Um, impacts a couple ways. For me, I've always been a super competitive person. So for us, it's laying out the goals and figuring out what we have to do to hit them. But I think more importantly to answer that question, it's how we treat our team members. Um, so within our organization, everybody has uh, oftentimes multiple hats and roles. Um, but what I've tried to learn over the years on having bosses, uh, having people that I didn't enjoy working with, is how to not bring that into our company culture. Um, so really what we try to do is empower everybody. Um, again, one of the terms I like to use is team members. Uh, I'm not a fan of the word employees. Everybody's okay. working together and collaborating. Uh, and really a family culture we try to build within the company. Um, what I find is we don't have days off. It's whenever you want off, you just give a heads up. Okay. And um, you're granted that without any questions or issues. Uh, whenever you need to do the doctors during the day, uh, you want to go golfing. We're a very project-based oriented business, um, deadline driven. So as long as things are in by the deadline, we don't believe in micromanagement. And we find that that's really facilitated a culture where everybody's working their tails off and um, they treat it like a family. So that's kind of been the big parallel that I learned that I didn't like when I was in an, a different environment and one of the things we tried to instill here and has been really helpful. That's a, that's a wonderful connection. There's a lot being discussed about whether or not small companies as a scale can really take whatever culture they started out when they were small and then allow that culture to scale and allow the business to function as an independent entity. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back again to being on the Philly 100 list. What has that meant to you as a company and how did you get there? Uh, it's, it's meant a lot. Um, Last year it was exciting, um, and I think we ranked somewhere in the mid 70s, and it was just really thrilled to be a part um, of the list and to show the the growth that we've had. Um, this year we placed number 12, and my jaw started hitting the floor. Uh, 70 to 12. I think we're 74 down to 12 this year. Okay. And. Um, I was secretly hoping for top 25. You do find yourself getting a little greedy uh, when it's around 15. <laughs> we're starting to root a little bit to go under 10. Mm -hmm. um, but really, there's just a whole set of factors that contribute to us getting there. Um, I'll take a little bit of credit, but really the most credit I should get is bringing on the right people. And one of them was a new business partner that had a different way to look at things, um, was really process-oriented and driven. And we wouldn't have gotten there without him because um, I was my own worst enemy. I was a control freak. Every major element of what we did had to touch my desk or my hands in some way. And part of what he instilled in the business over the last two years was delegation, um, trust, um, and scalability. Uh, we used to do everything manually. We now have a software that automates 80% of it. Um, so I'm actually working less hours today uh, we're doing more revenue than we've ever done, and we have four times the size of our client base just in the past three years. Um, and again, I really have to give credit mostly to others within the organization for that. Um, That's powerful. That's leadership. And again, it's, I mean, that jump, 74 to 12, is significant. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned teamwork several times. You've mentioned values, culture. What does that look like for any of the viewers who have businesses that maybe aren't on the Philly 100 list and they're working their tail off mm -hmm. and they're thinking about delegating but it just doesn't seem practical. Gotcha. So the <laughs> probably one of the top lessons I've learned over the past few years that's been eye-opening is um, you need to have trust and you need to delegate and you need to have processes. Um, I felt that I had more control over everything um, by working harder, but really what I've been taught over the last few years is working smarter. And it, I didn't resist it or fight it, but I am not a creature of change that does well with it. I've become a creature of habit. Um, but they knew how to take in incremental steps, my team and my partner, um, to try new things, uh, give me a taste to see how it worked. Um, when we brought on analysts to do some of the work that I used to do all myself manually, mm -hmm. I had ways to be able to check their work uh, in the beginning, taking a couple hours to review what they did, um, then an hour, then a half hour, and now it probably takes five or ten minutes. These are all things that helped us scale over time just through the lessons that I learned, um, which was processes, scalability, um, 
trust, delegation, uh, and then checks and balances to make sure that you can look back and know that everything is sailing pretty smoothly. Um, so Powerful. And I'm glad that you repeated those because it is important for listeners to kind of understand some of those fundamental rules and lessons. Drew, talk a little bit about your business and one of the ways that business is often measure, business success is often measured is through the results that you deliver to clients. Mm -hmm. So if you could combine those two and just give us a sense of, again, why you're on that Philly 100. Sure. Um, so there's quite a few factors. Um, the biggest, and I don't want to sound nauseous, but I do believe we are the best in the country at what we do, which is not a very glamorous business, but we reduce costs for companies with their current cell phone services. Um, so a win for us is an even bigger win for a client. Um, unlike most businesses where you're selling a product or service, we're reducing costs with a current service um, where their level of service stays the same, nothing changes except their bills reduced. And then they can use that cost savings to fund different initiatives within the company. Um, if it's using budget for other pet projects, um, in 2008, uh, we had a customer that um, went through a very hard downturn with the financial meltdown, and ultimately we were told the cost savings we created, which was a couple hundred thousand dollars uh, annually, was saving a couple jobs. Um, wow. So those are some of the exciting parts of what we deal with. Um, and again, that was in 2008. Today, our biggest thing is last year, um, we increased our average cost savings from 24% to 35% for our clients. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of a testament to, again, some of the different processes, um, some of the new team members that came on board, the ability to research and uncover more information on how to cut more costs for clients. So um, bringing on more customers, creating more cost reduction for those customers, and we get paid off the shared savings model, um, has created additional revenue and, and enabled us to grow. Now, I've looked at your website. You're about wireless cost reduction, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, we've talked about team members, and in the moments that we have left, another concept that you shared with me prior to getting on air is the way that you strategically partner with external. I, I, maybe they're partners or maybe they're team members, but you have a number of strategies that allow you um, to extend that concept of delegating trust, collaboration, and process. Yeah, so um, we actually have a unique business model, and um, we are structured through what we call an agent or partner channel. So we actually don't have any sales or business development people on our staff or on mm -hmm. our team. Uh, everything we do is operations driven for the project, the work for the customer, or supporting our agents. So how we do bring in business is we're brought in typically by telecommunication companies, software mm -hmm. companies, um, sourcing cost reduction firms, and they see us as a content expert either to uh, add another layer to a project they're working on with a customer, um, or one of the more interesting perspectives we've been given, especially from the software side um, of the industry, is they see us as a way to free up budgets to actually mm -hmm. pay for their services um, for the customers they're trying to sell into. Um, so everybody has a different reason on why they'll bring us in, um, but that's how we're structured and I find a lot in life is not what you know, it's who you know, and then yes. you have to prove yourself. Right. So with our agents and partners making personal introductions to personal relationships they have, it makes it much easier to transition that relationship into a customer and then prove what we can do for them and that's the model that uh, we've aggressively really grown on in the past few years. Drew, it's been a pleasure having you on Significant TV. I know that you, in your own work and professional work, have put together alliances and networks for other business owners that are under 40. Can you talk briefly about that before we close? Sure. Um, so where I learn the most uh, in my life, and professionally and personally, is through others. And part of what we've recognized is being under the age of 40 and being an entrepreneur, um, is a little bit unique. There's a lot of us out there, but one of the things that uh, myself and a couple friends, uh, including my brother, put together was an organization called the Under 40 Club. Mm -hmm. And we have about 35 members out of Philadelphia and Southern New Jersey. And what the goal was, was to bring entrepreneurs, um, business owners, decision makers, partner level at some of the bigger law firms and accounting firms, and bring us together for two reasons. One is social. Mm -hmm. um, you want to have fun and get to know each <laughs> right. other on a personal level. Right. Uh, and the other is business focus, not only leveraging our Rolodexes to help each other, but my favorite 
um, occurrence is about four times a year, we'll do a round table and we'll do different business topics. It may be social media and business development. It may be uh, team or employee management. But what I find is the ideas and the stories that you hear as we go around the table, everybody has different experiences, but there's a lot of parallels that take place in that. Right. And some of the best advice that I've been given or I've been able to take away has, has come from those round table sessions with my peers. Terrific. Well, today is almost like a round table. It's a round table of two. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe a half hour. <laughs> but the point is that I really appreciate you sharing your significant stories. Can wish you continued success. And I love the fact that you are in the Philadelphia area and helping entrepreneurs in our ecosystem be significant. Thanks again for being part of the show. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And there you have it, another significant story. A significant entrepreneur, Drew Poland, Drew Poland from Op Decision. Join us as we continue our journey within the Philadelphia ecosystem.